Hey, 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 welcome to The Chef's Table, a weekly video series for professional women who want to go from being a corporate employee to following their dreams of being a culinary entrepreneur. I'm your host, Chef Evelyn. This is the place for successful women who want to live, cook, and work on their own terms. So if that's you, let's get started. Hey, 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 and welcome back to another episode of The Chef's Table. And today I want to talk about six ingredients you need for a successful culinary business. And I think once you understand what these six ingredients are, you can kind of play with them and create your own recipe for success in your own culinary business. Or if you haven't even gotten started, it'll be things for you to think about. And I kind of wanted to narrow down like what I walk my clients through so that you can see where you are, where, where you need support, where you need guidance, where you need to maybe step it up a little bit, and also to see where you're doing very well. So the first thing you need is a clearly defined brand. I will say that being a chef and just saying I'm a chef that does meal prep or that does catering is not enough. People need to know why they're coming to you. People need to know what they get when they get you. I mean, think about some of your favorite restaurants. You, When you're in the mood for something, you know exactly where to go. Or when you want a certain type of experience, you know exactly where to go. Sometimes it's cuisine-based. Sometimes it's price-based. Sometimes it's experience-based. Sometimes it's a mixture of the two or three. But in general, you know if you go to Chick-fil-A, you were in the mood for chicken, okay, and a specific type of chicken. And there's a reason why you picked Chick-fil-A over Cane's, over Popeye's, over KFC. Not that I'm that into fast food, but you get my point, right? So you need to have a really, really clearly defined brand from your culinary point of view. Now, the second thing you need, and you guys know I'm always looking at my notes, is you need multiple streams of income. I think if you've been watching this this series for any amount of time or you've been following me for any amount of time, you've heard me tell the story that when I was doing an internship, I was working for a great chef who had an amazing catering company, but he was getting older and he wanted to retire. The problem is, is that when he stopped working, he knew that the money was going to stop. And so he was like, I'm stuck. If I, if I shut my business down, I shut my income down. And if I want to take a vacation, the money stops coming in. If I get sick, the money stops coming in. And I remember that his only option was to try to sell his contacts and his equipment and his client list, right? And I remember him asking me if I wanted to buy it. And I remember thinking very quickly, if you're stuck in that position, then I'll be stuck later. And I knew at that moment that I needed to figure out how to monetize my skills outside of the kitchen, meaning yes, it was okay if I wanted to be a caterer or a personal chef or meal prep and all that, but what else? What else could I do that wasn't dependent upon me being there present and in the moment? And I needed to have multiple streams of income. And as we have seen from what has transpired in the world and in our um our industry is that when you have all your eggs in one basket, even when that basket is really, really profitable, it can be dangerous if it's dependent upon you physically being there to execute it. Now, I always thought that was about, you know, health or age or timing or retirement. I never thought that external circumstances would also uh, come into play. But as we have seen, it's so true. And so one of the things I think the main thing that I specialize in teaching my clients is how to create multiple streams of income with the skill set that they already have and how to take that skill set and create income streams outside of the kitchen. Now, the third thing that I believe that you need to have a successful culinary business is you need a sustainable marketing strategy, which is you could be the best chef in the world, but if nobody knows that you exist, then you don't have a business, you have a hobby, right? And so a marketing strategy is what are the ongoing activities that you're doing daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, annually, in person, online, right? What are the activities that you're doing to get new clients, the activities that you're doing to convert those clients into customers 
and also to make customers repeating customers. There's so many different action steps for each one of those areas and they vary based upon platform or whether you're online or offline. And just posting on social media, hoping and praying that, okay, somebody will see a picture of your food and then potentially click through to your website and then hopefully book your products and services is not really it. There has to be some strategy put into place mixed with consistency and that gives you a sustainable marketing plan. Now, number four is you really need documented processes and systems, otherwise that you are on the quickest path to burnout. One of the things that I spend a lot of times with my client was is when they first come on is like getting everything put in place, right? Like, you know, how are you taking payments? What are your policies? What are your procedures? How do you execute your service? Is that documented somewhere? If you were to hire someone, would they be coming in and knowing how to pick up where you left off? Where is it written? Where, what are all the steps that it takes? Or are you just kind of it's all in your brain and you kind of know what to do and so you're handling it and you're responding to emails in real time and you're going back and forth with clients and you're taking payments five different ways and all of that you need documented processes and systems in your business so that you can spend time on the things that are more important and you can use technology and automation and a myriad of other tools to handle those administrative tasks in your business and also when you want to bring people on even if it's part-time temporary for one or two gigs even just so that you don't miss a step in your process all of that needs to be documented okay now the fifth ingredient that you need for a successful culinary brand is you need great customer service uh, and um, customer service, call it client retention, call it client satisfaction, whatever you need. You need a specific plan for that. A lot of people think that I got to spend all my plan. What's my social media plan or what's my money making plan or what's my lead generation plan? And you need all of those. But then once that client, once that potential uh, customer becomes a client of yours, what's the plan to keep them happy? What's the plan to keep them coming back for more? Right? How do you get them to become a client for life? Whether it's tangible business things or whether it's actual more soft skill things that you want to bring into the fold. Okay. And then lastly, you need a growth plan. Where is your business going next? So once you get all these things in place and things are kind of rocking and rolling and it's on semi autopilot and I don't want to sell the dream that there's no work there once you get all these things in place because then you have to continuously work that system. But then once that's kind of running like a well oiled machine, shall I say, then what's the plan for what's next? Do you have a growth plan that, okay, I'm working on this right now, but in the pipeline, six months from, now, months from now, a year from now, two years from now, this is where the business is going. This is how we're going to grow. This is how we're going to expand. And if you haven't had these thoughts about all these different things that we talked about, then more than likely you created a job and not a business. You create, you're, you're self-employed not an entrepreneur. Um, and there's a difference. And I think I have a video about that. But just to kind of recap what you need to have a successful culinary business is a clearly defined brand that people know what they get when they get you and your company. You need multiple streams of income now more than ever. I feel like, you know, um, it was very painful when all of this situation hit to watch our industry struggle and continue to struggle at the time of this, this recording. I think it's today is we're in April. We're in the middle of April. And um, I'm not sure when you're going to see this video because y'all know I create a bunch of these at the same time. But it was very painful to watch other aspects of our industry really, really struggle. And particularly for me, because one of the things I feel like I've been trying to say in my little corner of the Internet for years is you got to have multiple streams of income. You got to learn how to make money outside the kitchen. It doesn't mean you have to end that thing. It doesn't mean you have to close that thing. It doesn't even mean that that thing can't be the main thing, but you need to have multiple streams of income and that's any business. And I think that's because growing up, 
my mom always stressed to me the importance of having what she called attitude money, which is, you know, if you're in a situation and things aren't really going well, and not just like normal human dynamics, but it's a bad situation that you don't have to take it because you're in need, you have options. But also, it's just good to have, you know, even if you're an employee, it's beneficial to have an additional one or two sources of income. And this is not me trying to promote hustling and grinding or being exhausted or burnout, but it's like, what are some things that you can have in place that if you need to lean on them a little bit more heavily as life ebbs and flows that you have that. So it's the same thing in your business that in the event that one revenue stream in your business is slowing down, whether seasonally or what's going on in the world or in the economy, what's another leg of business that you can go, well, you know what, that one's slowing down. Let me crank this one or these two or these three up, right? So that's something that I help my students do. And listen, it is it is a process to build out all of those revenue streams, which is why I do it in a high level program because it's not a one size fits all. It's not that everybody has chef X, Y, Z, one, two, three, the exact same um, products and services is customized to your current skill set. And um, but I, I work with people on a high level with that because It's valuable. It's something that I was able to do, particularly if you're like me and you were a career changer and you're like, I'm used to a certain standard of living. And so I don't want to have to work harder in my passion profession than I did in my corporate profession. So that's it for today's video. A little bit longer than usual. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below, which one of these six things do you have? Which one do you need support around? What questions do you have about it? And uh, if you're not following me on Instagram, make sure that you do. If you have questions about pricing your services or about setting up some policies in your business, I have a mini course called Price It Right, which will walk you through how to accurately price your products and services so that you're not undercharging and that you're not overcharging. And then also I have the Freelance Chef Starter Kit, which will help you begin the process of putting some policies and procedures in place. And so with that being said, I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Thank you so much for watching. If you're ready to make the transition from employee to entrepreneur, then make sure to register for From Corporate to Culinary. From Corporate to Culinary is a mini course designed to help professional women begin the process of following their passion. So whether you are still on the fence about following your dreams or you have already leaped from the corporate ladder, From Corporate to Culinary equips you with the tools you need to live, cook, and work on your own terms. For more details and to register, go to fromcorporatetoculinary.com. Now, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click that subscribe button and turn on your notifications so that you never miss a new episode. And to see what I'm cooking up behind the scenes, make sure to follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Chef Evelyn. That's all for today, and I'll see you next week. Peace.